opening up about these things. So it's, it's hardly something that I think is outside the, the, the community of uh, especially social justice focused weekly discrimination conversations. But, but if we can talk about discrimination, I can't talk about my experience of discrimination. That sounds pretty discriminatory. Several of your CST colleagues reported to Sammy feeling uncomfortable because you inappropriately have shared information, including discussing legal issues with your past employer, including changing your legal name for purposes of litigation, your ADHD, PTSD, and anxiety, and sharing feedback from your supervisor verbally and by forwarding Sammy's letters of concerns to personal email addresses, and asking about colleagues' feedback from Sammy. Several CST colleagues have reported that you discussed with them on multiple occasions that you were in crisis, including sharing that you were curled in a ball sobbing during a work meeting. On January 25th, a CST colleague reported to Sammy that you canceled meetings abruptly, very close to meeting times, to dominate meeting discussions, often on items outside the meeting agenda, and have unsuitable reactions to meetings. In January. I would like to just make a note of the fact that the meeting you are pointing out that I canceled, uh, I'll give you a lot of this, and, and I'm not going to be able to give this to you today, and, and I refuse to accept that you are forcing me to, to resolve the trauma that you are just perpetually thrusting in my face. That colleague, Penelope Georges, that you quote, in two cases, first of all, I want to say, uh, in regards to the comment about that canceled meeting, the reason that meeting on that day was canceled with short notice was because Sammy had just re re reamed me out of nowhere. That was the day that I got, uh, I forget the exact date, but I can find it. That meeting was canceled after I got, yeah, that, the, no, that meeting was canceled on January 12th because I was having an anxiety attack because I had just gotten written up after asking for accommodations. And if you want me to somehow function in a professional environment where I'm isolated, living by myself on Zoom with two to three people that I get to talk to every day and somehow go from being written up for something that's completely not true to then having a meeting and being a fully regular, you know, like everything's fine colleague, I don't know what your understanding of human nature is, but it's absurd. So, and then secondly, this is where I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I was the most supportive and co co collegial colleague to Penelope Georges through our time together. I gave her, in every instance, the benefit of, I want to encourage you to feel like you have a role to play in this course because she consistently felt that she was not a good fit for this particular kind of course that we were developing together. She reported to me numerous times that she didn't know why she was teaching this kind of course. I pushed her forward and encouraged her self-worth and, and engaged with her to try to get her to feel that she was contributing and, and she did eventually in actuality take a lot of tips from me on how to contribute and she responded gratefully for those tips and then secondly talking about someone who cancels meetings without warning you have seen that on uh, I believe you have seen if you have not on uh, it I found this particularly obnoxious to reflect on in, in, in light of the horror show you've turned my life into, but it was all of, what was it, in regard specifically, it's in the uh, appendix that is based on Adam Finkelstein's conversations regarding uh, the Wintermester class, and that's appendix, I think, B, uh, is, that, is that B5? Uh, Basically, what I'm getting to is that I had a meeting with Adam Finkelstein for three hours on uh, on Christmas Eve, and Penelope Georges was too busy baking cookies with her kids to come. So if if I'm being still after getting terminated after asking you you have just in one conversation elucidated that I asked for accommodations for having a crisis going on to criticize me for expressing that crisis, and then going on to detail that my colleagues were uncomfortable, when if you had accommodated me for the fact that I had asked for accommodations, my colleagues wouldn't have been affected. And none of this would have happened. So this is, again, all the things you're pointing out are during the accommodation process happening. So we can't forget that. And, and I'm not finding the email... 
But it, it is in the... Uh, did you see that email about the Christmas cookies? If it was it, if it was in what you submitted by Friday, I, I don't remember every... Uh, it's a footnote. It's a footnote. Sorry, I, she, she says uh, a half an hour. She, no, she says this after the meeting started. So I have a litany of... A, she actually missed numerous meetings when they were happening. She didn't even come to them. She didn't tell us until after they were happening. And then on December 24th at 106, I had started a meeting at 1 o'clock with Adam that went on for three hours on Christmas Eve. She says, sorry, I can't make it today. We've, we've been baking since 7 a.m. and I still have three en enthusiastic kids I don't want to bail on. I have a dozen emails where her, Catherine, uh, Joe Capizzi, or uh, Brennan's walking his dogs. He's too busy to, to respond to an email. He's out walking the dogs. Uh, I mean, like, what you're doing to me is just... Can, can him, go ahead, go ahead. Um, in a January 21st, 2021 meeting with Naomi and Penelope, when a CST colleague did not allow you to derail the conversation, it was reported that you left the meeting early and yelled about it the next day. What, what are you talking about? Say it again. In a January 21st, 2021 meeting with Naomi and Penelope, when a CST colleague did not allow you to derail the conversation, it was reported that you left the meeting early and yelled about it the next I day. I have no idea what you're talking about. You have to give me more information if I can even hear what you're saying. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, with respect to planning related to the Hack the Drag event... Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Did you just skip... What, 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 I'm sorry, I need to go back to what you just said because I don't understand it. You were talking about a meeting with, was it Amy LaViers? No, a meeting with Naomi and Penelope. But you said another CST colleague that I, I didn't, I something, there was a, a conflict. No, no, I, the, I said when a CST colleague did not allow you to derail the conversation, it was reported that you left the meeting early and yelled about it the next day. Who is that? What is this about? I'm not clear. This is you're saying a CST colleague. You're referring to a meeting with Penelope and and Naomi. You're not telling me which one it was. Is that what you're saying, or there's not? Or is there a third? No, there's not a third. So you're saying that uh, are like wait. So this is. Um, January 22nd? 21st. January 21st, and this is, um... STC Tech Meet, so this is, uh... We're meeting to go through, uh... Wait, I don't think I was at that meeting. January 21st. STC Tech Meet. Uh, because I had a visual meet the next day. STC Tech Meet on the 21st. Oh, was that... Yeah, I don't think that is real, but I'll go back to my records. Uh, y you are saying I yelled about it the next day. Uh, let me look at my records here. I mean, I I I'm really not, I'm not comfortable with this. If, 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 you know, what you're doing is just... Uh, this is how you do these investigations. It's like, I I'm just getting this, like, overwhelming amount of information that you're somehow expecting me to retain and and respond to you're conducting a court hearing basically without me having a lawyer where everything that you're saying I need to be able to address somehow yet you're going through it at a pace with a level of scrutiny that again I will say is harassing uh, for what for what reason whatever class it is I don't know uh, but so I'm just going to double check here. I have the emails I pulled up here. January 22nd is also not really an arbitrary date. So if you, you know, like... It's a January 21st meeting. Oh, okay. So let's not forget that January 22nd was the day that I had my crisis. Okay, so whatever you're saying about yelling about it the next day... Uh, Bet that week, I was, while Penelope Georges was cookie baking cookies with her kids, I was building 20 computers in my one-room house by myself. Uh, and on the 21st, I was emailing with Karen Haskin through that day because that was a day that I was being very confused about how the accommodation process was going. I had a doctor's appointment that day. 
I don't have the, that meeting in question that you're referring to, and I'm going to really need more information about what that meeting was, because I have a STC Tech meeting on the 21st. I'm, I, okay, so this is what it's about, I think. I think this is about... On the 21st, there was a meeting about... I don't think Naomi was there. I think Brennan was there. I think it was Brennan and me and, and Penelope. Um, I think it was the day that we came up with plans for whether or not we were going to be able to incorporate the Sphero into Brendan's peripheral kit. Now, I know your school is intent on destroying me, no matter how well I did my job, but what you are referring to is, in fact, on the, I believe, I will recant my emails, I was charged kind of spur of the moment by Naomi to get these robots to send out. This all came up after all the peripheral kit and all the computer technology had been formulated in December. Somewhere around January, I can get the, the dates, then the Sphero came up. Um, I believe that's what you're in reference to because there was not a conflict, but it was like, Brendan didn't want to uh, order the Spheros to put in the peripheral kit. And I, this is, again, every time I tried to do my job and Brendan told me not to, I had to be assertive. So if you are, uh, possibly Penelope is summarizing the fact that the following day I again expressed disconcerted feelings about the fact that how could Br Brennan didn't want me to order the Spheros in time for him to have them in the peripheral kits to send out the following week. I said I could order them right now and they'll get to you by tomorrow and you can put them in the kits. If I don't do it right now, they won't come in time. And, and he was trying to get me to send a second kit later in the semester and I had been told by numerous other people not to, not to do that, or, I, I mean, uh, you know, so you can go ahead, but I don't know, I don't fully understand that, that comment, um, and you're really grasping for straws here, but go for it. Uh, with respect to planning related to the Hack the Drag event, it was reported by others that in October 2020, you began working on this event, including having weekly meetings with the CST event coordinator. By email dated November 18th, 2020, you informed Sammy that you wanted to use BR to make the event virtual. It's not true. That's not true. That's not true. It's AR. They're different things. I mean, augmented reality is not virtual reality. And that's, the email never says the word, never incorporates the letter V. On January 12th, Sammy confirmed in a meeting and by email that you would have a public announcement for the event on February 1st, the first day of the semester. On January 22nd, Sammy reconfirmed in a meeting and by email that you would have a newsletter announcement by February 1st, 2021. On January 29th, there was little progress on the event and concern about the lack of progress had been raised with Sammy verbally and in writing by a collaborator, so Sammy informed you that at least an expression of interest should be ready you, by you're, February you're, 1st. You are lying. You are, this is so wrong, but continue. I, I mean, really. And, and again, none of this has to do with the, like, whatever you want to do here, you're trying, you, you, you're, 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 your insistence on, on permanently traumatizing me is so offensive. I asked for accommodations. I was fired. Yeah, there were, if there was a miscommunication about getting something in the newsletter, please, you fire people for that? The, new, the newsletter on February 1st, she did not. None of that is true about the chain of events you have described. I had speakers that I had contacted. I had a program I had decided on. I was ready to go with most of the background for that project. I had yet to really form, formulate it because I also... Uh, was developing my relationship with the LGBT Center. This is again on the cusp of a holiday just ending. Most people are kind of on break still in some capacity. Um, but by February 1st, there, there is no indication, and I have the records, 
Sammy did not say at least an expression of interest. I said because of the stage of things we are at. I have been told that we don't have... I have a speaker I've announced. It's, it's a speaker named Chaka McLaughlin. I'm ready with my side. The LGBT Center has a whole different side they're still coming up with, and I need to work with them more to formalize that plan. Therefore, by February 1st, we're not really ready to have an entire website built with an outline of all the events, because the LGBT Center was going to uh, get us a drag performer, I was going to do the tech tutorials, I was going to have a lecturer, that's the nature of that collaboration. I was still working on that conversation with the LGBT Center, uh, slowly but surely, we got things in place in time, but on February 1st, it was my in initiative to say to Sammy, to her dismissal, which you have recorded in one of the documents, if not I'll find it, she, she seemed intent on uh, me having things ready when I told her they would not be. So first of all, you need to realize uh, there, everything you have just said is offensive to me and re-traumatizing, first of all. Secondly, I will just read to you again, because this has been completely omitted from everyone's just inhumane treatment of me. My job definition as Associate Professional Specialist, they manage their own time. They normally receive only general directions about the results they are expected to achieve. I was given to some degree, by this job definition, I would have thought enough latitude to say, our project planning is going at the rate it's going. As you know, I've been focusing on building 20 computers and shipping them on time. Therefore, by February 1st, what, what I did say was, we'll have an expression of interest live. Because we don't have the drag performer confirmed, I can't make a poster with a drag performer that, you know, we don't really know all the details from the LGBT Center, which we're going to get to. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is the second thing you're o overlooking here is that in many accommodation requests, when someone is expressing that they have anxiety or fatigue or other related symptoms, a very common ADA and JAN-related uh, norm is that essential job functions be prioritized where uh, the term I can't think of, marginal job functions, be deprioritized. I had been informing, and Sammy was well aware, and all of these colleagues you speak of are well aware that I was in crisis, and yet you are still, even though I have informed you, I am still in triple the crisis now. You're insisting that my inability to have a plan ready for what would be considered a marginal job function, uh, uh, an augmented reality drag show, that is also, let me clarify, much more complicated, fundamentally, on a technical level, than any of the other things my colleagues were doing. I'm sorry, it's just more complicated to do an augmented reality drag show than it is to have, in Penelope's case, an undergrad schedule a bunch of visiting speakers, or in Brennan's case, have undergrads do, you know, um, rad labs. I was planning an event that was going to be basically like a TV show with a bunch of people doing augmented reality performances with very sophisticated technology and having undergrads submit, uh, you know, presentations and have judges and have prizes. And, and in the month of January, everyone was aware that I had my fair share of work to complete while also working forward on other tasks. So continue. On February 4th, you informed Sammy that you couldn't have the logistics set by February 8th, and Sammy agreed to revise the deadline to February 14th to publicly announce the event, which would have all dates, including tutorials. Because February 14th was a Sunday, you needed to have all information to the CST event coordinator no later than Friday, February 12th. Can I ask you a question? What, what criticism is this referring to? Daniel, I am giving you all of the evidence that we've collected. Yeah, but in reference to what? In, in reference to what criticism in the letters? It, it it's in, in reference to criticism about meeting or concern about meeting deadlines and following through on plans. 
but this specific example is not referenced. Yeah, so I'm glad that you point that out because it wasn't, because it's not what it's talking about. So, so you, you, you're, 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 you're taking a detour for your own benefit, but the plans that were discussed in the criticism were very clearly in the letter focused on preparation of the computers. You're, you're creating a subcategory of another project that I did not formally document lots of evidence of. I mean, I have it, I just didn't share it with you because it got canceled because I got fired when it was ready to go when I made an amazing trailer for it. But anyway, uh, I, would, I would not think that your, your insistence on, 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 on just going out of your way to find things, this was not talked about in the letter. And you've, you've since clarified that, and I, 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 I actually would like you to stop discussing Snap the Draft. Uh, and okay. none of that evidence should be referenced because it's not anything I was criticized about. You're creating an entire different layer for your own benefit about a project that, again, I couldn't have completed because I got fired. So, so th the pain of, of the amount of work I put into that project over six months, which was, first of all, like you have, a lot, you have had already some documentation about it, that people were supporting it, they were positive about it. I got lots of good feedback about it. Um, you're, 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 for whatever reason, I know Sammy's really intent on destroying me, and the school's really intent on on defending itself. But no more discussion about that project. It's irrelevant and it was not mentioned in any letter whatsoever. My letter dated March 5th, Sammy informed you that you were terminated effective immediately for consistently unsatisfactory performance over the past several months. The letter lists four areas in which you failed to demonstrate consistent improvement, including failing to represent CST in a professional manner in your, inter excuse me, in your interactions with CST collaborators, which led to the Art Museum's decision not to collaborate with you failing to effectively manage professional relationships with faculty, collaborators, and colleagues by challenging their expertise, demonstrating inflexibility, speaking unprofessionally, and prioritizing your areas of interest expertise over theirs, failing to honestly and effectively communicate about scheduling of equipment shipments, guest speakers, and other matters, and failing to follow office procedures for tax-exempt purchases after receiving repeated instructions. You reported that the issues raised in this letter are inaccurate and or exaggerated and or do not justify termination. First, with respect to failing to represent CST in a professional manner in your interactions with CST collaborators, including the Art Museum, you reported that the Art Museum did not move forward with collaborating with you because Catherine Riamaki changed the ideas for the museum project the day before the meeting and that Catherine yelled, spoke over you, and spoke aggressively during the meeting. Uh, I also want to point out, I'm sorry to interrupt you, and I'll be more calm. I apologize for getting uh, upset. Um, but, you know, I, I think you are both aware. Um, I know, <laughs> for whatever, I, 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 nobody cares that I keep telling everyone that I'm dealing with a crisis, and nobody seems to care that it, it's, it's real, um, and that you're not helping it. Uh, so I'm obviously not, you know, all you've done today is remind me how little my colleagues cared, how little the school cared, and, and, and how you've just... So, in the updated letter, I know you say or you say not is uh, relevant for today because you didn't maybe review it from last night. Um, it's important to just at this point also point out that I have evidence that I will share with you that what whether you have people lying on the record now or not, which you probably will, I have evidence that demonstrates that it was not the Princeton Art Museum that decided not to move proceed forward on the, the collaboration. It was Catherine Riamaki and Ve Veron uh, what is Veronica White. And C Catherine Riamaki specifically said that Stephen Kim and others might still move forward with you if you want to move forward. Meaning that what, 
and and also this is a conversation recorded the day of my termination with Catherine. Um, so there's notes about this in the update from last night. Rimaki had not yet known that I had been terminated, and she was upset that um, I was uh, bringing up the topic of the art museum overall with her because she was upset that I had pointed out that she had been hostile towards me in an email to her um, because she just cannot confront her own uh, bullying um, and also feels, I guess, entitled to do it. Uh, but anyway, what I'm trying to get to is that uh, it's very important that you note that um, Rimaki addressed on that date that it was not accurate what was written. So whether or not you have since had people lie to make it accurate, I want to make sure you realize that those lies are not going to stand water. Uh, so, uh, again, I'll also say that <laughs> the museum not moving forward on me independently doing a lot of work for them that they had little to no, uh, I mean, all they had to do was give me images or work with permissions to let the permissions work. They weren't, their collaboration stopped there. I mean, you know, they, they, were, they were meeting or sending me JPEGs. I was creating hyper-realistic 3D environments with interaction that allowed for people to explore the museum out of my own sheer contribution to the excellence of Princeton. And your intent to defame me, despite the excellence of that project, especially that being something that was used, as you know, within, I think, you might not have read this uh, because, I, no, this was sent by the time, so you'll probably bring it up. Um, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's not nuts considering how wild everything else has been, but the timeline for the emails doesn't add up. The art museum was on the, we had the meeting on the 18th. I emailed with Rimaki citing that she had been unprofessional. I, I, I said less uh, intense words. I said that I just like working with people who are patient and, and collaborative on the 24th. And there was no indication on the 24th the, that her colleagues had changed their mind. So you have this. Uh, on the 25th, I said, let's meet again. And it's only seven days later on the 5th that suddenly, apparently, uh, all these meetings, I guess, take place between the 25th and the 5th, which I'm sure you've documented falsely. Or, you know, you've gotten Catherine or Veronica White to say things. Uh, and then you also know that they literally had pre-scheduled a presentation, I believe, most likely with that project in mind, because I sent you the invite. They had a presentation at Vanderbilt two weeks ago, last weekend, it was last weekend, of virtual art uh, and science collaboration techniques. So they had that scheduled. When I was getting fired for not doing well enough on a project that I did everything right on. So go ahead. Um, it was reported by others that during this meeting you didn't understand the clearly articulated goals for the project despite being told multiple times by multiple people during the meeting including explaining that there would be a trial run over the summer prior to your presentation in the fall course. So fire! It was, it was reported by others that Catherine did not yell, but spoke firmly and clearly about the project and the trial run over the summer prior to the class. I am also speaking firmly and clearly right now. It was reported by others that during the meeting you were highly agitated, Immediately after the meeting, a museum staff member communicated to Catherine that the staff member was distressed by your behavior and concerned about collaborating with you. Who is that staff member? By email dated February 26th, an art museum staff member indicated to Catherine that they do not wish to move forward with the project because they did not have enough clarity on how the collaboration with you would work or agreed upon project goals. 
and it was difficult to understand what would be possible with their timing. Okay, so you just basically said two things that are um, inaccurate and also contradictory to the original critique, but continue. Failing to effectively manage professional relationships with faculty collaborators and colleagues by challenging their expertise, demonstrating inflexibility, speaking unprofessionally um, about your work at CST, and prioritizing your areas of interest, expertise over theirs. Oh, I'm sorry, actually, Randy, can I just go back? So, in, in the in the email that I will subpoena that on the 25th, curiously, the same date that I confirmed with R Catherine that I was happy to move forward despite the day before writing that I appreciated patience and, and collaborative uh, dynamics in a pleasant way because she was aggressive to me. The, the, the uh, let me just ask you... The uh, just so you know. Oh, the next day. Okay. Well, um, so, but just to clarify, did she say, in, did you say just now that my lack of professionalism uh, and unpreparedness were reasoning that she gave? Um, I'll, I'll reread what I just said to you. Um, by email dated February 26th, an art museum staff member indicated to Catherine that they do not wish to move forward with the project because they did not have enough clarity on how the collaboration with you would work or agreed upon project goals, and it was difficult to understand what would be possible with their timing. So just as a, as a quick rebuttal, uh, the, 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 outlandishness of this is so insulting to me the day of that meeting or the day prior as you know Ver uh, Catherine emailed me a very compressed email that had who knows what the goals are anymore I don't know who knows I don't know because that email as you know I, I, I guess I didn't send you this yet and you should be able to get this from other parties I'll have to send it to you because you're making me do all this work we had established project goals over several meetings with multiple pre-existing proposals. This is harassment. Every time we came up with a project goal, it vanished in thin air. So despite having three proposals with very clear educational goals, all of it was discounted in an email the day before the meeting, and apparently also, as you point out, colleagues were unaware of, they didn't maybe even see the proposals, I don't think Catherine sent them. But to say that there weren't clear project goals is to say that I'm not wearing a white shirt. We had, and I will share them with you, how many project goals can you have? In, in how many proposals before someone's convinced of clear project goals? What are we getting at here other than I'm being harassed and intentionally retaliated against? And secondly, um, those... That meeting, when the, the very incident that caused a disruption was one whereby I attempted to ask Carolyn, I believe, who I had only met that day, please let me know based on, you know, so I'm sitting there, I have picture in picture, literally in my Zoom, of a virtual reality art museum that I'm zooming around in, and I'm, I'm saying, hey, Stephen, you know, if we want, you can, like, you know, enter in scripts or you can do this or that. And uh, I say to Carolyn, you know, if there are, and I say this to Veronica specifically, I think it was Veronica, uh, if there are specific things you'd like to implement, like, uh, and then I said it to Carolyn too, you'd like the students to be able to, you know, move works around in the environment. I really need to know those things clearly. You know, you need to tell me, I can't. I'm not going to be able to make clear project goals for your needs unless you tell me what they are. To which, Catherine Riyamaki was very affirmative, or the terms you used, um, articulate and affirmative, in saying, Daniel, we need you to be the one giving us these goals. Not, not, we don't need, it's not, it's not a situation where you're to ask them. And I'm like, well, no, in, in project development collaborations, it's not uncommon uh, to ask your collaborators for what is called uh, a feature request. You know, like, you'd like the students to be able to do this or that. And that was the first moment where she, in her 
as you in your euphemism of justifying bullying and in, in parallel to your euphemism of justifying a fitness for duty as just a random IME, uh, she bullied me openly about the mere fact that I attempted to literally ask the museum what their project goals would be, only to be counter bullied to say I was responsible for knowing what the project goals were, only then to say, well, Catherine, for six months we've been emailing uh, about 40 pages of documents of goals. Yesterday you said they're all out the window, so what do you want me to say? You can proceed. Um, you have reported that you were not inflexible and often defer to the expertise of others and provided a number of emails in which you said you would be flexible or others commented that you were flexible, sometimes referring to the timing of meetings or sometimes referring to the substance of projects. When Naomi changed her use of class time during her module and moved your in-class demonstration of motion capture to students viewing it outside of class time, you told Naomi it should be done in class. When it was not scheduled during class time, you told Naomi that you would sit out for some time during the classes that week and devote the time to other commitments. You were told you were inflexible for not attending classes because your demo was moved, but Penelope also sometimes missed classes when she had other commitments. And, and I went to those classes. So I was there yes. for the full classes. It was reported by others that when on February 26, Naomi decided that your teaching motion capture would be outside of class time, you were visibly upset and suggested that Naomi cut her time teaching or the guest speaker's time. On March Yeah, 1st, because I was trying class, to see if we had five minutes. I was asking for five to ten minutes. I, I was not cutting time. I, I, t this is so harassing, I can't even begin. First of all, I was an instructor on the course. I was Daniel, let me, let me finish this example, all the evidence, and then you can provide us with additional evidence that you have. Let but, me just get through this example, all of the evidence that we've collected. On March 1st, the day of the class, you emailed Naomi in the morning that you were going to sit out of classes that week since she didn't need you. Then you attended the weekly course planning meeting at 11 a.m. that day and said, let me know how I can help, and ended up attending the class. The CST colleague reported to Sammy on January 25th that you have blatant inappropriate reactions to meetings, that your preference is to dominate the meeting dialogue, and that when that CST colleague did not allow you to derail the conversation, as you often do, you left the meeting early and yelled about it the next day. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. You have to, I think you're, you're, you might be fabricating an entire event, because I don't remember, I don't have no clear memory of this. And I also, uh, again... Daniel, we're not fabricating anything. We're reporting to you the evidence that we've collected from various interviews and various documents. Uh, we are just giving you a high-level summary of the different evidence that we have collected. But I don't remember that event, and, and, and I don't know what you were talking about. So when you were talking about something that uh, I can't recall it's important for me to verify if it's real or not. And you're, you're also, the high level, you're intentionally omitting names, which does not help me. So uh, I understand for whatever reason, you know, you're doing this to obfuscate your, your liability, but uh, if I don't know who I'm, a, a CST colleague, Penelope George is, okay? You mean the person, again, too busy making cookies to like, you know, I mean, I'm sending her computers. I'm, so I, ha I sent you video, of her, you have, being visibly excited about the motion capture working that day, that she was pleased, that it, and she, she states in that video, I will send it to you again, because you're making me go through this a million times, she said, wouldn't this have been nice to have used during the, the mirroring demo that we did, where, where all the students are uh, imitating each other, and I was like, yeah, this is why we spent, you know, $10,000 on the equipment, but go ahead. Um, it was reported by STC 209 faculty collaborators that you were very creative and had great ideas and explained things well, that you were also very headstrong and often would digress during planning meetings, and that Penelope had a very respectful way of refocusing you. With respect to failing to honestly and effectively communicate about guest speakers and other matters in relation to your courses and projects, 
you reported that this refers to invitations to Luc Dubois and CST affiliate Bora Yoon and miscommunications surrounding these two speakers were minor and ultimately inconsequential as the visits occurred after your employment was terminated. Post termination, Yoon told you that the miscommunication confusion regarding scheduling and plans for Dubois' visit were not your fault and that she and Dubois both generally fulfill their obligations even if communication is delayed. There was a month gap in your communication with them and you thought they already had confirmed and Penelope thought they had not yet confirmed when you reached out to arrange honoraria. The responsibility to manage speakers was equally shared by all faculty. It was reported by others that you sometimes invited speakers without first consulting with Penelope so that the speakers could be coordinated. There was miscommunication about speakers you reached out to, including the two you referenced, and there were instances where you communicated that you had invited a speaker, um, i.e. from mechanical engineering, when you had not actually invited that person. That's not true. That's nonsense. I have a dozen emails that are between me and that person. And again, I put in... So first of all, you have this in, in my original letter I sent to you, where... So Penelope Georges, who isn't fired was on an email that literally was sent by Bora Yoon around the same time as we started this discussion, and it's in the document where um, Yoon, this is on CVI page uh, 158, Yoon shared with me an internal colleague we could contact recommending to both myself and Dr. Georges in an email to connect with Florent Guys, writing he is very much into interactive video art and generative algorithmic music and video. Months later, Dr. Georges failed to even recognize his name or connect to the previous conversation that she had been CC'd on. So if someone is failing to communicate properly, and I'm literally taking it upon myself to respond to Yoon's suggestion, I contacted guys, I didn't CC everybody on every email I sent everyone. That was never, I, I had never been informed that that was the norm. I did eventually say, uh, I've been, I had, so Florent guys, uh, I'll send you the emails, kept kind of deferring meetings. So he was very unresponsive. I mean, surprise, a lot of people during the pandemic have been really hard to like, you know, get confirmations from or, you know, coordinate. Fire me. Continue. Um, with respect to failing to follow office procedures for tax exempt purchases. You reported that you communicated with Joe, Kathy, and Sammy to ensure that you were following tax-exempt procedures to the best of your ability, including setting up a tax-exempt account with Unity and ensuring Walmart purchases were tax-exempt. Joe erroneously told you that centrally managed Amazon account had been set up with tax-exempt status, and you corresponded with F&T to ensure that you followed tax-exempt procedures for software purchases. You're failing to follow Office procedures for tax-exempt purchasing cost the university an insignificant amount of money, such as several dollars at Home Depot. You also reported that the laptop you ordered for Naomi had tax on the receipt, but that UPS actually deducted the tax from the order, and the university did not actually pay the tax. It was reported by others that there were multiple times that you did not follow the procedures for tax-exempt purchasing, for small and larger purchases, including the Microsoft tax of over $250 for STC 209. That's absolutely outrageous. You're lying. First of all, I either CC'd you or neglected to on the email to Joe Capizzi and other people in finance. I was fired before I could submit that properly because it took that long to go through the process of, first of all, I hope you get to the false charge that you intentionally put on my credit card, but I had to spend most of February working with uh, Will Panagakakis to figure out why $200 was charged to me by mistake by the school probably, and nonetheless I was still working with Microsoft and I have documentation of it where I was getting the receipts in order to send to them from each account to get the tax, to, to get the tax reimbursed. I had set up the proper process. You have documentation of over two weeks of me in January going back and forth with Microsoft in order to figure out the process. We first set up a tax-exempt account with a Princeton EDU 
business account. They said, you can't use that account to buy Windows. So then I had wasted a whole week of getting a form sent and getting it all approved. I had to then figure out that you can't get a tax exempt status on a Gmail account, though you have to use a Gmail account to buy the Windows on the Microsoft Store because you can't use a Princeton EDU account on the Microsoft Store to buy Windows. So we found out this is fact. You, we had no option other than buying the Windows, then getting the receipts, then getting a really cryptic email address and sending the receipts with tax exempt form to that email address. You could not give them a tax exempt form prior to the purchases. Not possible. And as I point out, uh, between February 1st and March 5th, I was doing that. And then you fired me. You can't hold me accountable. Again, so far, you've also kind of tried to hold me accountable for Snap the Drag, as if I could have succeeded with the project. So, I mean, you, you better give me more time to respond to this because it's just outrageous. I continue. Uh, to order through Princeton Prime, which has the tax exempt status rolled in, requires more planning because it is not as quick as Amazon Prime, and on several occasions you did not allow sufficient time to order through Princeton Prime. It's absolutely like horrifying. Email. Excuse me? I, I just, it's, it's horrifying that you're, you're, you're demeaning me so much beyond my capacity. What your school has done to me is so harmful, I can't even begin. Are you, you're implying that if, you're implying somehow that I am being, that I am rushing orders, yet also being impatient in project planning meetings, yet also at times failing to meet deadlines. I am supposed to somehow, simultaneously, follow procedures I barely know how to follow because I've only been working remotely for five months, when every time I email Joe, I get a, uh, an auto-reply saying he's out for the day. Kathy works part-time. Those are the two people in charge of this. Every time I ask Sammy, she said, don't talk to me about it. Talk to, the same, talk to Joe or Kathy about it. And as you know, which I, I, I'll, let, I'll, I'll move on, but all I need to say about that is two things. Yeah, sometimes I had, I didn't know early enough that I needed to buy dowels to send to students. Why? Because Sammy, because Naomi told me in mid-February and we needed to get them to students by March 1st or the first week of March. So what was I supposed to do? be late with the project or be impatient with Naomi who is giving me sudden deadlines for things that have to that require substantial work or go to Home Depot and buy them because I can't order them and then when I if I was ordering things for example a computer that I tried to order to have sent to Naomi to allow her to use in a class you'll probably get to um, I, I would have preferred to have just gone to Best Buy with my card and buy it and just mail it to Naomi because she would have got it. Instead, I followed procedure. I used Prime. I believe that Joe and Sammy intentionally manipulated that order after delaying approving it for two days because they knew they, it was going to come to me first before going to um, Naomi. They, I looked at the order again in more detail, and it wasn't due to be paid until 30 days after the order went through. And this is, again, a situation with merit to your claim that how am I supposed to perform if I'm being expected to simultaneously do something correctly, but immediately, but not be late, even though most of the people I'm trying to patiently collaborate with are delaying communications by a day or two every time I ask a question. And then finally, I'll let you continue, and I apologize for interjecting, the only thing I have to say about any of this is that I spent $47,000 nearly, and everybody else spent a fraction of that. And that amount of work that I put into purchasing in the six months of my job, compared to Catherine Rimaki, who spent $400 in the six months, 
while she was... N do you, you... I don't even know if you understand this. Catherine and... and you wouldn't need to understand this because you don't need to blame yourselves, but I do blame you, your, your school, and, and also your cover-up. Catherine Rimaki and, and uh, what's it, um, the other colleague um, who's leaving this, uh, this summer, they didn't even have classes this semester. They weren't even, let alone teaching, they weren't supporting or co-teaching. Catherine, and um, I'm sorry, uh, I can't think of his name, um, off the top of my head, he's, he's going to Vanderbilt. Uh, they had basically no primary work. I was, you, you have also in this conversation, astonishingly, you know, told me to do my job and not to do my job. You, you've said that I was having conviction and being firm about expectations for how to teach the class, yet also that was not welcome, uh, and that, that I was contradicting. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, all I need to say is that the amount of work I did to ensure that that Windows licensing purchase went through properly is, as you have seen in one of the earlier addendums, part of the reason that I was rushed to the point of a crisis because we didn't, we didn't know how to order the Windows right, and neither Jason Lesage or Joe Capizzi gave me clear advice as how to do it until finally January 20th we were able to do it the right way. And between January 20th and March 5th, which is all of a month, I did all I could to get that information sent in. And even after you fired me, you have an email I think I CC'd you on where I sent a zipped archive of all the receipts and gave Joe instructions on how to properly send them in to get the tax reimbursed. After I was fired, I was still following your tax exempt procedures. And see seeing you on it. On February 18th, 2020, Sammy met with you and reminded you again about purchasing on Prime and using the tax exempt forms. Um, it was reported by others that although there was an occasional instance in which others made a purchase and paid tax, it happened with more frequency and higher dollar amounts for your purchases. And the reason often was last minute purchases that would not arrive on time through Marketplace or Princeton Prime. You're, what are you even, are you saying that, you're saying that I was making last minute purchases that wouldn't arrive on time. You're somehow implying that Choices I'm making to buy equipment that I'm not sure if I'm even, literally, I don't even know what to say anymore. What I'm just going to say, and let's, I'm sorry I keep interjecting, I know it's annoying. All I can say to that is, again, what you've pointed out is outrageous because, as I've said, I, I acknowledge that spending $46,000 might incur more tax exempt issues than someone who spends 400 that should be taken for granted this did i habitually not follow tax exempt procedures absolutely no absolutely not i habitually did everything i could through documented emails that you have whether you want to document people saying to the contrary you have all the purchases you have all the emails why, why does it matter what someone says? The numbers are there. Yeah, no. Go ahead. We are not, we're not implying anything. All we're doing is presenting a high-level summary of all the evidence that we've collected so that you are, are under, uh, have a full knowledge of all the evidence that we've collected. That's all we're doing. We're not implying anything. We're presenting from... I, I know, but what I'm I, I'm just saying that it's not you don't have you don't have evidence about someone saying I did something. You have evidence that I've sent you that shows that I made all these purchases and that a lot of them I did the tax. You you have evidence of someone saying something. Who cares what they said? That's not evidence. You have the 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 numbers. So the Excel sheets are here. I sent them to you a few times. And, and you can see in those Excel sheets that there are dozens of occasions where people made purchases that look like they have tax on them. Dozens. And yeah, there were a few times when I did it too. That's disparate treatment. And, and again, what someone says about that 
has no bearing on what, what the numbers show. So uh, it's not evidence when someone says something randomly. Thank you. The, we, evidence is what people have said in interviews as well as the documentary evidence. And then when we get, when Walter and I begin deliberations, that's at the time that we will determine the weight the various pieces of evidence have. So this is just a summary of all of the evidence from all different sources, both from interviews, from documents, from audio tapes, from videotapes. And we are, we are getting to the time where we will start to deliberate on that evidence and weigh the, the weight to be given to all of those different pieces of evidence. Okay. The last thing, Sammy reported that following office procedures for taxes and purchases was a minor area of your unsatisfactory performance. The most significant areas of unsatisfactory performance were your unprofessional interactions with CST colleagues and outside collaborators and your failure to honestly and effectively communicate with Sammy CST colleagues and others. So that's that's like literally a by the book euphemism for we fired him because he's a disabled gay guy. That's that's what they say. So he couldn't get along with others and he was unprofessional. That's I mean, you know this is like what they do. So keep going. You had no that's, real reason. That, that's the end of the summary of our evidence. So I know that you've responded um, along the way as I've given you pieces of information if you had a, a, any additional information to share. But now at the end, do you have any other than what you've already provided along the way? Do you have any additional um, information to share with us in response to this summary of evidence? Well, uh, okay, so I, again, I, I appreciate your patience and, um, you know, um, the first thing I should say is that you have not illustrated my claims accurately. Uh, you've conducted a biased and, 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 and horrifying investigation that has just, uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, what I have, uh, and, but I don't want to insult you because obviously I want you to be on my side, even though you won't probably ever be, um, given your employer. Um, all I do know is that, um, what we went through today was not a sufficient response to my allegations. I don't know where to begin with how you've subtly, su su subtly is, is what I mean, subtly dissociated the accommodation request from th this is obviously the real, the real problem here is was there protected activity? Yes. I asked for accommodations for disability. Secondly, according to ADA, was that disability known or something I was regarded as having even prior to the accommodation request? Yes. You've seen evidence. You haven't even discussed it. First day of my work, I said I have a disability on my intake form. There was no follow-up from OHS or anybody at that point about, you know, what it means to have a disability at Princeton or identified. They didn't even ask me what your disability was at that time. You have not discussed any of the evidence I have given you about the uh, process by which I was clearly articulating to my supervisor about the developing hearing disability, which is still substantial, and how that affected my work in a substantial way from the beginning of it in August to present my whole life. Finally, uh, you completely omitted in, in a very, I'm genuinely scared how how openly you skipped over the crisis experience and the severity of that as in regards to being in the midst of the accommodation process you have heard tapes of my supervisor being overtly aggressive to me you have heard tapes of Catherine Riamaki being overtly critical of me regarding hearing and focusing you have instead gone through a litany of partial testimonies that included 
the most minimal of what I would imagine were actually more substantial comments of praise by colleagues who did like me, unless they were gaslighting me. So I'm happy to send you all of the positive feedback I have from Penelope, all of the support I have from her. Yes, I did discuss with her that I felt, uh, like, like, where has your university somehow inverted the logic of me reporting being harassed or feeling hostile into suddenly I'm being report you you have justified me being written up you have literally at the end of your conversation today you have said that the most significant concerns Sammy presented were unprofessional elements of my behavior in relationship to my colleagues or something to that effect what that is in reference to is in your own description my comments about my health, my comments about my recovery from my trauma, which, appropriate or not, were discussed at times to make people aware that I needed people to accommodate those disabilities. Those are what I was doing. So the whole discussion you've had with me today has verified that all of these people knew I was suffering all of the supervisors, Khan and Haskin, knew I was asking for, and, and Leonard, knew whether you discussed her at all because she's a f tenured, you didn't intentionally. They knew I was asking for, com they knew, they ha had knowledge in December, as you know, that the accommodation process had been initiated. You know that up until March 2nd, I believe, I was asking, you also omitted this, and you attempted to wrap it around some other way of saying I had stopped the accommodation process. I did not stop the accommodation process. On March 2nd or 3rd, asking for short-term disability as a way to deal with my issues is, in a, a way, connected to that for me, uh, and I believe, formally, connected to that. This conversation, again, is not about, or shouldn't be about, was Daniel fired because he was not performing well? The conversation of your investigation should be about, was Daniel engaging in protected activity? Did reprimands occur that interfered on December 12th, on January 12th, that was interference. The first letter was a, effectively a threat to get me to stop with the accommodation process because I had only initiated one stage of it on December 13th. I hadn't gone through with the doctor's note. So you have blissfully overlooked the fact that that process of the accommodation overlaps immediately and directly with letters of reprimand. Whether they have merit or whether they are minor shouldn't be your concern. Your concern should be, did my documented protected activity directly relate in time to those who were aware of it, my supervisors, reprimanding me for minor things that have, as you have noted, despite the evidence, you've noted ambiguity in the decisiveness of each of the, the concerns. So whether or not you can say that it's valid that, you know, I might have wanted to demonstrate motion capture and I said, uh, you know, do I have five minutes to do it? Like, I mean, like, what are we, what are we doing here? That, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that Sammy Khan knew I was asking for accommodations for a disability through those two months of December, January, and February. And you have also blissfully omitted, most specifically, you have said two things today that are so injurious to me, I don't even know how to, to respond to, if this is an investigation or what it is, 
the IME, which again is an IME, but isn't, it's an FFD, which isn't an IME, and an FFD is not an IME, it's an FFD. So, you, you know, you, you can't change to something into something it's not, but you seem intent on overlooking the fact that are we to, did, did, I, I'm going to ask you this, what's your defense for the letter being submitted that morning? Why did Sammy Khan write me up on, on that date? We don't provide defenses or support for any particular argument. All we have done is collected evidence and presented you with all of the evidence related to the independent medical exam. At the end of the fact finding, it will be our job to review all the evidence and deliberate and make finding of fact and conclusions as to whether or not there were policy violations. Okay, so you are aware that that, that letter occurred the same day as the FFD, the second letter of continuing unsatisfactory performance. The second letter is January 28th, the January 28th letter you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is all the evidence that you need. So whether you want to go through every detail of interpersonal dynamics between people who have never met, who have worked remotely to try to create virtual environments for online education during a global pandemic that we've never experienced in the history of mankind, the likes of, go ahead. But all I know is that on January 28th, I was supposed to take an FFD with a discrimination agency and instead, or what I believe, and I believe you, if you would believe, would believe that that letter was intended to come to me whether or not I took that test. It had to be because you don't write a letter that fast. And that letter was Khan and, and, and Haskin causing me to have a breakdown during an FFD. I don't know what evidence you need to substantiate that the FFD was an FFD. It was a six hour exam. I was consenting to having conclusions about the assessment of my behavior in that exam being used for personnel decisions by my employer by by agreeing to take the exam. That is a fact. And the same day, I received a two-page letter for the first time, literally. So how many times can we say this in how many different ways? The exact same day I was supposed to take an exam for the accommodations, I was written up. What we are investigating here is whether or not my request for accommodations for disabilities caused retaliatory behavior. Why do we have to address anything other than the fact that over the course of December, January, and February, there was a series of clear attempts to find things that, again, I, what I'm going to do, and I'll follow up with you with a, a whole new dossier, and I'm going to take as much time of the next 20 days of your investigation as I need. You're not finishing the investigation today. I'm not giving you my full, I haven't even given you my response. I've given you my, my knee-jerk reaction to the, the, the nightmare that you perpetuate. And I apologize because I know you have some jurisdiction over decision making and I assume you will, no, no matter how nice or frank I am, you'll come to the conclusion in the best interest of your employer. The evidence that matters to me is that I still can't hear out of my left ear and I made a great trailer for Snap the Drag I made a great virtual reality art museum. I enabled and encouraged, if you, this is the other thing that I doubt you did or will do, any attempts to uh, insinuate that I was 
inequitable or imbalanced in the course or in uh, the conversations, despite those being really, again, not like your job as an employer, you do have a job as an employer to people you employ. And it, you, it, it, if there was criticism to me about, you know, Daniel, you're, so again, like, I mean, you could write me up today for saying I'm not being receptive to the criticism you're giving me because I'm not allowing you to state that I wasn't completely imbalanced in meetings regarding the class. I, I, I will not agree with that. I, I went out of my way to encourage Penelope to have time. And, and what I was getting to is that if you want to watch the class, which is a month of teaching, you will see that there is not a single class where any person takes up more time than the other in the actual instruction. At times, I'm rushed, and I only have about 20 minutes to do a quick demo of something. But in each class, there is at least an hour in the three hours of Penelope doing a, a demo of, of science, or Adam doing a demo of graphics, or me doing a demo of a software, and, and that was balanced. Um, whether or not in meetings I got sidetracked, uh, you, you're, you're firing me for that because we're on Zoom, and we're all learning how things work. Uh, you could again so this whole interview i've i've dominated this interview because well this interview is not a class meeting this interview is about me but but anyway i'm distracted what i should say is that um the most important thing i can do to react to whatever it is you've gone through today is say that i'm 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 personally feeling a little, uh, well, I feel confident because you've admitted to a lot of objective things being false in the write-ups. You've acknowledged that. I don't know if you are prepared to, when you do your adjudication, confirm that, and I'm not asking you to, but you have more or less acknowledged that, you know, uh, forms did not exist, everything was, I don't know, if you didn't really acknowledge this, but I wish you had, all the computers were delivered ahead of time, only one was even delivered the day of the expected deadline, so, you know, whether or not you acknowledge this, you do know and you have the evidence that I was written up before something went wrong that didn't go wrong. Uh, the class went on fine. You know that Adam, whether, yeah, like I said, we all wanted everything to work out on time. It did. Did I ask about a backup plan? Yeah. Okay. Everything worked out. All those things only matter because I was retaliated against. None of these things would matter if I still had a job. I can write you three letters right now citing numerous times when Penelope Georges skipped meetings, delayed meetings, uh, the same for Catherine or Paul. I can send you uh, numerous I can write letters about each of my colleagues that fit, uh, like this is, I, I assume you took this into account at some point. It, what, if you listen to the recording of me talking to Sammy on the 7th, I am simultaneously both trying to get her to understand that I've been doing my best, and I had told her this a few times prior, to work with Brendan and Catherine. I was trying to, I, I was doing everything I could to be a good colleague to them. And this is where, you know, you turn into bizarro world for me because the only thing that was happening for me the whole time I was working at Princeton was I was 
asking for accommodations, telling colleagues I was going through a hard time, and reporting colleagues for not being understanding and instead being hostile or bullying. And then when those reports went in, which is policy, so you are looking at whether policy was followed. You will listen to the recording between my meeting with Karen Haskin when she broke policy. So policy says that when someone reports harassment, it should be responded to. You have it recorded that I reported to the dean harassment, and she worked with and this, this is by the book stuff here. This is, this is how this works in, in, in breaking the law of retaliation. When I reported that I was being harassed, the dean and my boss worked together very clearly to interfere in my report, stop me from... Uh, well, interfere in the accommodation process, I feel. It was interference to write me up. It was not, uh, it was not, the writing me up wasn't helping me feel confident about moving forward. Um, what I was just trying to get to is that the policy, I, I, I don't know if uh, you have it in your stuff somewhere. I'll, I'll let you all go in a minute because I know you have other stuff going on. Um, I, uh, The most important thing, I guess, to say in, in, in resolution is that looking at the entire process by which THR 210 operated should give you reason enough to infer discriminatory motive and retaliation. The documentation was sent last night and I can send it more thoroughly now that you have given me the ability to address your your evidence. During my assistance of THR 210 as a result of Joe Capizzi ordering the wrong equipment, as a result of Brendan not being involved in that process, as a result of me being new and helping while making virtual reality museums and building a new class with Penelope and doing a whole bunch of other stuff, we were able to consistently, successfully get loaners for students and help replace equipment that was the wrong thing. All of this was happening in real time. All of them were mistakes. They were things that were wrong. That, you know, Andrea Lauer or David Bengali or Joe or whoever had made some mistakes. I didn't get my kit until halfway through the first month and things were delayed and, and you know, the speakers were supposed to be public. Everything that happened in that class was my training ground for how to do STC 209 when I was actually an instructor. And again, in early December, I am... As you know in the recording, you have also omitted what you know I believe to be wrong, that my boss consistently and frequently asked me health-related questions. You have it documented in audio. This is policy. I don't know what policy it is, but I'll find it. I don't know if it's your policy or if it's just law. But an employer should not be asking their employees of their own initiative. And you have audio recording on December 7th, I call up Sammy, I say, I've been maybe exposed to COVID, and she asks me how my hearing test went, and she asks me about the status of my disability. And that conversation, because it was just, uh, like, again, that whole conversation was like, for me, it, none of it, none of, I, I literally had to pay a therapist on Monday, despite being broke, to listen to that conversation before I sent it to you last week. I, I had to sit with someone to listen to it again so I could deal with it. Because 
for the hour, I misspoke in times and said it was two hours, for the hour in which she talks to me about all my colleagues coming to her and all of these problems, I listen to it and I look back at it and I'm like, this is all because this conversation is happening because I tried to ask Joe Capizzi if I could have the equipment sent to me because that's how Andrea Lauer had done it in STC 210. And I tried to ask Joe Capizzi how things were done. That week, I don't know if Sammy, you've also failed to acknowledge that I feel like there were retaliatory discriminatory motives acting against me in bullying capacity throughout my time from my start date to the present. You failed to discuss anything regarding Terrell Morton or Baron Bixler, but those are serious concerns. And I spoke with Terrell recently. Uh, Terrell uh, was invited to start his job in the spring semester if he was given the job. Um, I should also say though that whether those retaliatory motives were due to my protected class or my, my status as a person who had been documented as developing a disability that maybe my boss just simply didn't want to have to deal with, uh, whether those retaliatory motives were happening while my disability was developing or whether they were sped up or whether they started the first and second week of December, I don't need to know. All I need to know is, in that December 7th conversation, at the end of it, Sammy says, I say to her, you know, um, I hope that you let me know if, you know, I need to look for, if, if these things are serious and I should be, like, looking for, you know, a better fit somewhere if I'm not a good fit. I, I would want you to let me know. And she says, no, no, no. I must not be giving you feedback correctly if that's the way you're feeling because... And she says this in the preface of the conversation, you know, I'm only saying this stuff to you because I'm supportive and I, I want you to succeed. And this is again, December 7th, after four months of semi-weekly praise, I'm making masterpieces, I'm brilliant, I'm doing all this great work. So midway through December, what starts happening? Someone changes into a different person, Boss Zilla. And Sammy Khan begins to aggressively speak to me in ways that are the complete opposite of how she handled every issue in Andrea Lauer's STC 210 class. So, STC 210, halfway through the class, she realizes Joe had ordered the wrong uh, Raspberry Pi type thing. Do you think that she wrote Joe up for that? No, there's these pleasant emails saying, of course, Andrea, we'll give you some more funds to order what you need and we'll have it, you know, sent out. And, you know, Daniel can correspond with Rick Pilaro to get the Macs sent out this week and we'll get the computers. And Brennan's not involved in any of this. But, you know, next thing I know, after I ask for accommodations in December, I'm getting bullet point emails that on Tuesday by 3 o'clock you'll have this done on Wednesday as if I had a habit of being that late when you know despite what you have tried to come up with as, as vague assertions to the contrary that are evidence but to what end when you have the, you have the UPS tracking numbers you have the, the, the project for the art museum went fine I did a great job working with Bora for the LIS. I was in every class for STC 209. I didn't miss any of the planning meetings. I did take a meeting or two off, as others did. And they were not fired. So again, all you need to know is that Sammy and Naomi changed in December from being tolerant and supportive in whatever capacity they actually were to being aggressive and insisting that my performance was so unprofessional despite literally December 1st an email saying I'm a pro suddenly I'm so unprofessional despite I have Alvy Ray Smith the co-founder of Pixar do a two and a half hour sit and conversation with 20 just beaming students and I'm very professionally managing this with Adam and the three of us having a great conversation despite all of this and going out of my way to ship tubes to all the students for Naomi and 
helping her get that set up. You have hurt me so bad. I was so, I had a hard time. If you want to say that I, that having a hard time because it was, I have a disability and I am recovering from a trauma and there was a death from COVID and that's why I had in the months of quote unquote, when I'm referred to, you know, the letters only refer to the past several months of performance. They specifically refer to the window of time in which I was going through the accommodation process, December, January, and February. So they specifically refer to a window of time that was the very, as you have noted, clearly articulated to many people, Daniel's going through a hard time. Did I try to use your, your processes to achieve a better work environment? Yes. Did I feel intimidated and written up as a result? Yes. Was I subsequently terminated for reasons that are inequitable compared to the standards applied to other employees? Yes. You have evidence of all of that. I don't want this to keep going on in my life. It will, if it's not resolved. As you know, I am still fighting Virginia Tech. My life will become about these things if they're not resolved, because it is, and it won't change. You will change my life by resolving this in a compassionate and, and realistic manner by addressing the, the truth of what you've addressed, which is evidence that shows that write-ups were false and that I was participating in the protected process. And, and you can make that choice to help me move on and help me in ways that won't require financial recuperation. They won't require reinstatement. The, the If at the most I ask from the university as a result of the grueling 24 hours of investigations that you've put me through that have done nothing but show me that you know that you did something wrong, I ask if nothing else, help me figure out how to reconcile this with my career so I can confidently apply for another job, so I can have Adam Finkelstein write a letter of reference or Stephen Kim write a letter of reference so I can get a job. Because right now, I am completely convinced that what you did was wrong. It has hurt me in a way that's, I, I'm already disabled from trauma physically, so I could only go down. I'm getting therapy actively daily. Again, to fix this wouldn't res require admitting fault, involving lawyers, or fiduciary financial compensation of any sort. And I say that to you not in a binding way, but in a way whereby I just mean to uh, address you as humans and say, if you will help me heal, I will be able to. If you do not, I will not. I am hurt, and you have hurt me. I am open to resolving this in uh, uh, just parting ways with, you know, I mean, a mutual level of, I, like, again, you fired me in the middle of a class. It makes it look like I was doing something egregious. I'm even nervous about applying for unemployment. I wasn't doing anything egregious. Yes, you've pointed that out. You've stated. I, and I will tell you, you your lack of of acknowledgement of the evidence of Will Panagakakis' ticket of the, the false charge. Will, uh, that was intentional. So they were, there was sabotage. Whether I have to fight this the rest of my life and deal with this as a part of who I am and, and, and absorb this into my identity as an artist and, and practice different measures of, of just uh, who knows? I mean, again, this trauma is compacting a pre-existing one that I'm still in the midst of that you are all quite aware of. Um, I am going to take some time to address each of the indiscrepancies that, again, are I don't even know how you're going to hold them together. Um, 
I didn't find any of them strong, and I doubt you could. I mean, they're pretty weak. But I'm going to need at least a week or two to get back to you. I'm not going to be able to do it immediately. Um, so, 